Welcome back to my uh, YouTube channel. As um, you probably know, um, I'm not printing anything other than the um, the Prusep, um health visors at the moment, uh, safety visors. So I thought I'd just get on with some other projects. Um, I've been meaning to do this one for about two years. I actually bought the parts a couple of years ago and never, never completed it. I wanted to have a remote on-off for my Octoprint. Um, which I've finally got around to building. Um, I even bought the, the um, couple of um, mains powered relays specifically for it that can be driven from Octa, Octa Pi, um, very low current switching on them. So I thought it was a good time to do it. I had a, um, a, a, um, a Raspberry Pi 3 um, spare so I thought I'd, I'd set that one up completely and then I can leave my existing one which uh, is driving my printer which you can hear in the background um, and then I can do what I want with it and just um, bring it up to the latest versions and add some uh, controls into the Octopi, um, Octoprint interface to control the relays um, and also I put a remote on off switch for the Pi so if you rather than unplugging it you, you can some, sometimes cause a problem I've actually got a little switch so and then I thought I'd put it in a box um, which is here um, I actually had you don't have to this has actually got a, a plastic cover on it I just had a, a face um, one of these brushed aluminium box these um, plastic covers that take um, actually take these they're, they're for AV switching they, they've got sort of brushed um, AV uh, cabling if you've got them on the wall they've got these sort of brushed things there and you can bring cables out I just had a spare one of these so I thought that I might as well use it I mean, I'm not recommending you actually use one that you can see in you could just put a blank you know clean blank over it uh, and I also had because I'm using um, some of this plastic for the um, Prusa visors uh, I thought I'd as a spare piece I'd actually use it as a, as a shield there um, again I'm not recommending it's got mains power in there um, and I've got this tucked away in, in the background but uh, it was it's, I thought I'd do it like that anyway so just to show you what's inside just, um, This box will mount on the wall behind uh, my printer. So I bought a couple of these. Um, these are made by SF uh, Innovations. These little um, um, relays. I mean, you can use any mains powered relay that you want, uh, but these are actually sort of designed to work with Octoprint, and um, so I bought them, as I say, about a couple of years ago. Um, so I've actually got two. One's going to be controlling the power for the my Prusa printer, so it'll actually turn the mains power off for the printer remotely via the, the web interface, and the other one um, is going to be for turning the lamp off because I've got an external light. It's got a 13 amp plug input and two IEC female outputs so one and two is connected to relay one and relay two so I've actually got two switchable circuits so that that is the that's the, the system um, to connect it off to the Pi um, because I had various bits lying around when I was building uh, for my uh, uh, InMove robot um, I've got a lot of ribbon cables ready made so I thought I'd use a ribbon uh, cable to come out of there I've wired it off some small little, um, uh, what are they, little, these little PCB boards in there and ribbon mm. connectors which I've sold, um, ribbon headers that I've soldered on in the inside there. I'll put some pictures on the blog a bit clearer, which, which come in and then wire to the two control um, mm. inputs in there, which basically get 5 volts, 0 volts and and on from the Octoprint which is high or low, whichever way around you want to do it. This goes high. Um, yeah, it does go high, yeah. Um, got mains in uh, through uh, uh, a uh, relay there. It's only switching the live. It's not switching neutral or, or, or the neg line. Uh, and it'll just turn it on and off. So you've got inputs which are paralleled because I've got one input and two outputs. Um, the ribbon cable goes off to a little adapter. I was looking for sort of 
you can get breakout boards for these, um, but they sort of sit on top of it. You know, they're sort of breakout hats, and it wasn't quite what I wanted. Um, I've actually got one not to hand. I did have a few different ones with screw down terminals and various things, but I wanted to um, keep it really low profile because I'm trying to put it in a um, in a low profile box. This is uh, one with a sort of a big built-in heat sink. That bit um, will have some heatsink paste and will actually sit against the, um, the main processor in there rather than just having a um, little heatsink. Uh, you can get little heatsink, hold on, I've got some. You can get these little heatsink covers. Whether they're, they're necessary or not, I think, I think they're probably quite a good idea because sometimes this workshop can get quite warm and because this is running the, uh, the printer I don't want it to um, drop out or anything. So um, I, the pie I've got running the printer at the moment has got those on, so I've never had any problems. But this one, the idea, I think, because it's metal, the whole case becomes a heat sink. I haven't used these yet, but it seems a really nice case. So um, I wanted to keep it all low profile to get it inside there rather than having a double height case. So I built myself a, a header um, and soldered it onto just shaped piece of that I just basically cut out um, the corners there and soldered some header pins onto it there uh, and the, the header sockets effectively on that side and then I've wired um, off the various GPO pins to to the uh, these these pins here which will go on via the ribbon if you see what I mean And then off to off to control that. So this will slot or does slot in. Line it up. That just uh, effectively that's a homemade break breakout board, and because it keeps it really low, this is the thing you can see there. So, um, so that will then. That will plug in there. Cable goes flat over there, and then that sits on there. And there's a there's a slot down the side there to let cables come out of the bottom here. Uh, so I think that's they're rather rather nice uh, cases. So that's how it sits, and that obviously goes in the bottom there. Um, and I've tested it; it all works. So I can now control. Uh, these off the off the Octo Octo uh, print software. I will show you the the software, and also um, what I've added in. Um, again, if you disconnect the OctoPi, Oct the a Raspberry Pi, when they're powered up without um, putting them into standby or shutdown mode, um, you, you can cause problems. It doesn't often happen, but you can cause problems. Um, but it, as they as they're headless. I had nowhere to shut down the, uh, you know, I haven't actually got a keyboard connected. I had nowhere to shut down the Pi. Not that I ever do. I think this Pi that's running this um, printer has probably been on now solidly for two years. Um, so they work. <laughs> but what I did was um, there is a method of shutting down, which is just shorting out a couple of the GPI pins, which are pins. Um, the pin numbers five and six, which is GPI three to ground. If you short those with a little add a script in there, it'll put the unit into standby. And if you short them again, it'll it'll boot it back up again. I've got the um, the code and I've got the um, the YouTube videos that I copied all this from um, because it's not it's not original work, but um, I've done uh, quite a few mods to it and it's all, all working rather nicely. So to get the um, I thought I'd have. At the top there, a tiny little reset switch. Well, effectively, that's an on and off switch, uh, which I've just um, super, um, hot glued onto a tiny little PCB in there. Those little, they're, they're these tiny, um, not those ones. It's those tiny little switches in there. 
they're just momentary and she switches I drilled a very small hole in the in the plastic and lined it up um, and it works really well I've I just cut in half a couple of um, a servo extension cables in there uh, I wired one end on to the extra pins I'm using so when this goes together that will plug on in other words I can take the lid off rather than having it hard wired onto the lid uh, and it'll, it'll just sit in there and uh, I can turn the unit on and off um, via, via the little button. I've only, as, as I say, it's tiny, so I won't accidentally uh, turn it on and off. It's, it's tucked right on the back wall anyway, so there's no chance of that. So I'll turn it all on and I'll show you the software and I'll show you it actually working. Okay, if I power up the, uh, the Pi. This is a, um, a new one. This is a Pi, uh, it's not a Pi 4, it's by Pi um, 3, but uh, Pi 3, oh, what is it, it's all B, I think. A box somewhere. Yeah, it's a Pi 3 B plus, this one. Um, it's pretty fast to uh, boot up. I've got a Pi B, uh, as in Pi 1, I suppose it is, which I was originally messing around with, and that takes ages to, uh, not to, so much to boot up, but to actually start streaming to um, uh, the Octa, Octoprint server, it, it ages. And, uh, but this one's pretty much instant. There we go, straight in. I'm not using Wi-Fi, um, only hard wire, but it does help if you plug the, <laughs> the cable in. So um, that is pretty instant login, actually, it's really good. I've just called Octoprint Relay Control because my other Octoprint, uh, my other, um, up to, up to print unit is driving that uh, printer uh, so I don't want to get them mixed up um, the other one is uh, well I've got it on the screen Hold on. this is my uh, existing one this is the one that's driving my uh, printer at the moment so I've just called that one Octoprint Prusa and different IP addresses obviously so that this is the new one um, what I've, um, I've got a camera connected to it, but I will show you the commands I've actually put in, um, which are on the system menu there. So I've added in, just make sure you can see, yeah you can, uh, added in a printer on and a printer off uh, command, and I've just given them relay 2323, that's, that's the uh, GPI uh, pins, just so I remember, uh, and light on, light off. And so if I, um, and the power uh, for the relays is coming from the actual um, um, Raspberry Pi itself on the 5 volt bus, which you, which you can do as long as you, because um, the amount of current that that will give out is dependent on your power supply itself. So it's not, it's not going to over um, cause any problems to the Octopi as long as you've got a decent power supply to, to the to Raspberry Pi rather. So if, for example, if I turn on like you probably can heard it just click. I've got a, a light on there. I'll just pan down and hopefully you can see that. Yeah, you can. It comes out a slightly different colour, but that's a red LED there. Uh, I can just toggle that on off. So if this is light off, and you heard it go off there. Um, I've got also just pan back up again. I mean, the, these these commands here is whatever you want to write in them. I mean, they're, they're just text commands into the uh, files that you put into the uh, uh, into the into the Pi. Uh, I've got printer on, which is another relay. Again, you could hear it when you turn printer off. I've also got uh, a um, safety message that I've written in. Well, I haven't written. I've copied someone else's code, which I'll show you in a minute. Um, which again is, are you sure you want to turn the printer off? Are you sure you want to proceed? So this is actually not turning the printer off uh, via G-code, which you can do, but not on the Prusa, not the way I've got this set up, but turning it off, turning the relay off, which is killing the, the mains power. So if, if I proceed, you'll hear again, the lights go on. So just uh, I'll just flip down to there. I'll just, you'll just see them, the lights go on and off. So that's one light on and lights 
and there's the other relay on so those those two little leds i was thinking about bringing the leds out and putting them on the on the panel but um what the other reason i thought if i've got a clear screen i can actually see the leds inside it it doesn't matter because i um I don't think I'm going to do that for them. I'm not going to bring the LEDs out. I don't. I don't need to. I can see the light go on, and I can see the power, the, the printer come on. Um, I will show you this in action as well. It's it's a really neat little thing to add to your octopi. So that's connected. If I just hit it. I'll show you the um, screen actually. So we're, we're online, we're logged in. Come out of the dashboard. Oh, we're not logged into a printer, but we're logged into Octo, Octo, Octo Printer. So if I hit the button, a couple of seconds, server's offline. So you can now down power. Um, I'd still give it a couple of seconds actually. Um, you can now down power the the unit. In fact, when when you do a standby command in in uh, uh, Raspbian, the it, the uh, default one actually gives you I think 50 seconds before it shuts down or it goes into a shutdown mode. So it's still worth just giving it a little time before you pull the power. You know you're going to be all right. Um, I can then start. Um, you want to make sure you're fully powered down before you start back up again. Um, so I'm just going to. Start it back up again, press the button again, so it's the same button. Um, I'm just watching the, I'll show you the, uh, you can just see the uh, flashing light, the boot up light. There was another um, script I saw that you can actually bring out an LED um, that will flash when it's reading the SD card. Um, it's like an external power on, but it's not, it's, it's an activity light, but I, um, which I'm going to put in some other projects I'm doing for work, just to, so I can see when the uh, um, the Pi is um, accessing the car, because we're using quite a few of these Pi's at work at the moment, or well, we were when we were working, but uh, we're <laughs> a bit of a forced holiday at the moment. Um, right, so that's probably rebooted, and if I go back up to the screen, it's already gone straight back online. So... Um, by its own accord, which is really good. The other things I was going to add in, I've got um, in my, this is my original one, I've got the uh, history um, uh, add-on, which is really good. It's for the, the new version, um, he's, re, he's changed this because it's not actually now part of the um, if you go into the tools, it's not actually part of the uh, where are we? The plugin manager um, install plugin. You know the library is, is what I'm trying to look for. Um, the the uh, history uh, plugin. But if you go onto his site, um, he's got a uh, a version that you can add in via the command line. I haven't actually put it in. I'm going to put it in in a moment because it's. I mean. May use it already, but I find the um, the history page the most useful of all that was the, the, the plugin I use the whole time. It's the only you know it's an essential plugin, I think. Um, just because I keep an eye on um, you know, print time and filament usage, which I then add onto a spreadsheet, so I can just keep an eye on how long files you know things have taken to print. Um, I also use folders the whole time, which you probably do, um, which are really good. Uh, other thing I've just set up as well, um, which I saw, and again I'll send you the link, um, was uh, adding a watch file, watch folder in, which I've never done before. Um, because I've never really, you know, you can just drag and drop um, files into into the uh, uh, into the folders directly, um, but. Um, I was looking at some old uh, YouTube videos of some of the guys who were, you know, running you through sort of advanced Octoprint setups, and he was saying set up a, a watch folder, which I did, and it was um, it's quite involved. Um, but if you follow his commands, his follow instructions, um, it's because it's you've just got to change the setup configs a bit in uh, 
in um, on the Raspbian on the Pi itself, which is quite interesting. It's all it's all worth doing, um, and it. It took about half hour, I suppose, following his instructions, and it worked first time, so it's great. So I do. I haven't actually set the, the watch folder up on this computer. I've got it in my office, but um, so you can drag a file straight into the watch folder, and it, it will appear, you know, as as in Windows, Windows 10 watch folder, um, and it will appear straight into the uh, into the Raspbian box. Um, so that was the other thing. Um, as I say, I haven't got it set up here, but uh, I'll, I'll show you the links. Um, so that's. Um, Go back down to my little box. So that that's what I've been doing. <laughs> As I said, I bought these boxes, these two relays, pushing two years ago now. Uh, I never got round to doing it. Um, so I thought, why not? Got got some time because I'm not printing anything else at the moment, uh, other than uh, the visors. Um, and I had all the bits, um, and I had the, the pie and everything. So it, you know, it's it's, it's been. The only thing I bought actually was this case. I actually bought this case for another project, um, uh, but um, it's been really nice because I've got some of the. You can get the little plastic ones. I've got a few of those. Um, that's uh, that's that. And I'll um, I'm going to put I'm, as I said, I'm going to put the watch folder on this this computer, but it's basically tested now, uh, and I can now put it all together. Put put the pie in its case. Uh, put the cover on that one and screw this uh, unit to the wall and I think um, I've got a print going on at the moment but uh, I will after this print I'll actually probably activate this and put um, swap it out with the existing system as I'd say you can see uh, I've just hot melted that bit of plastic inside there just hot melted the, uh, the switch on there but I was rather pleased with that it worked out rather nicely I'm just get a tiny bit of hot milk on the on the plastic cover, which is a bit annoying. Um, and there we go.